Federal law enforcement officers use a variety of different types of ammunition, depending on their need and purpose. During the 1980s, law enforcement agencies began a rapid transition from revolvers to semi-automatic pistols. As a result, many agencies discovered they needed a cartridge with more power than the standard 9mm bullet. In 1990, the Olin Winchester and Smith & Wesson corporations answered the call with the development of a 40 caliber cartridge that was more powerful than the 9mm cartridge and had improved ballistics. Designed for use in medium frame semi-automatic pistols, the 40 caliber cartridge has proven to be both versatile and reliable for law enforcement use. The Immigration and Naturalization Service, after study and consideration, has committed to use the newly developed 40 caliber cartridge as its duty round. Many other agencies, such as the National Marine Fishery Service and the General Services Administration, also use this ammunition. The 40 caliber cartridge is designed to provide more stopping power than the 9 mm and may be used in a medium frame semi-automatic pistol. This, for example, is a large frame 40 caliber Beretta 96D Brigadier pistol which is standard issue to the Immigration and Naturalization Service. This 40 caliber bullet is controlled expansion ammunition. By shooting this jacketed hollow point bullet into a block of ballistic gelatin, we can show how the bullet expands. This gelatin block will demonstrate the effect the 155 grain bullet has on the human body. Now, let's see the effect with the 165 grain bullet. Finally, the 180 grain projectile. What kind of power does the 40 caliber pack? See for yourself as the officer fires the weapon the bullet penetrates this piece of metal. The weapon with the 40 caliber ammunition has good range. As you can see, it can be shot accurately and effectively from a distance of more than 100 yards. Three bullet weights are currently available the 155 grain, the 165 grain, and the 180 grain. The 155 grain bullet, for example, has a velocity in excess of 950 feet per second at a range of 100 yards. It delivers over 300 foot-pounds of energy. Another example, the 180 grain hollow point bullet shot into ballistic gelatin simulating human tissue with heavy clothing, penetrates 13 inches. The bullet expands to nearly 7 tenths of an inch in diameter, while retaining 99.9% .9 of its weight. This is what happens when the ammunition is fired from a range of 10 yards at a car door. In this case, our officers use the 155 grain bullet. From the same range, this is the effect of the 165 grain bullet. Now, the 180 grain bullet. As you can see, the 155 grain bullet barely penetrated the door. While the 180 grain bullet completely penetrated the door, passed through the mannequin and the driver's side door, shattering the window. Remember, some car doors have a reinforced steel guard rail. This could affect the impact of the bullet, causing it to slow down or change direction. More than one round may need to be fired to ensure maximum results to stop the suspect. This is what happens when different grain 40 caliber bullets are fired through car side windows with tempered glass.
Now the effects of shooting through a car windshield using the three different grain bullets. Because officers also work at seaports, it may be necessary to fire at suspects who are in boats. This is what the 40 caliber bullets do when fired at a fiberglass boat hull. Now let's take a look at the results of the 40 caliber bullets as they hit the lower unit of an outboard motor. While the bullets penetrated the outer skin, the drive shaft stopped the rounds from going all the way through. Here's what happened when the same 40 caliber bullets hit the power head of an outboard motor. As you can see, the damage varies. This is the result of the 180 grain bullet. Here is the damage caused by the 165 grain bullet, and finally, the 155 grain bullet. While the bullets penetrated the engine block, not one went all the way through. In situations that require the use of force, officers or suspects may sometimes take cover behind objects such as mailboxes. Here is the effect of the 155 grain 40 caliber hollow point bullet being fired into a standard mailbox of the United States Postal Service. It may or may not penetrate and exit the mailbox. Now let's try the 155 grain ball round. Officers also work at airports. This is the typical material used in a light airplane fuselage. Back at the firing range, our officer fires the 40 caliber bullet at the fuselage door, producing the following result. Here's what happens when the 40 caliber bullet is shot through the plane's plexiglass window. Of course, most of the time you discharge your weapon during training. For that reason, the 40 caliber bullet comes in two types. Service ammunition for use in the field and training ammunition that's used for practice. Currently, for example, there are six types of non-lead training ammunition. They are the solid core jacketed zinc bullet, the stranded zinc core jacketed bullet, the solid core tin bullet, the plastic matrix bullet, the frangible copper bullet, and the frangible metal bullet. The purpose of non-lead, non-toxic, or reduced hazard training ammunition is to ensure the safety of the student and the environment. The Federal Law Enforcement Training Center at Glencoe, Georgia, has an official policy that training ammunition containing no lead be used at its facility whenever possible. This is to protect students, instructors, and the environment. However, the training ammunition is the ballistic equivalent of standard issue field ammunition. Recoil, accuracy, and range are similar. In this case, the training bullet is being fired at a paper target. One of the advantages, for example, is when frangible training bullets hit a metal target. They're designed to shatter, so no splashback occurs. This will reduce the hazard for the students and instructors. For agencies using this frangible training ammunition, or who are converting to it, this video is intended to show the value of the 40 caliber Smith & Wesson bullet. Recent developments with zinc core, tin core, and plastic matrix training ammunition have allowed the students to practice their shooting without the toxicity of leaded bullets 
or the dangers of training accidents due to splashback. Along with the reduced hazard ammunition, new technology in cleaner burning powders and primers reduces the student's exposure to heavy metals in the training environment. Remember, the 40 caliber S&W bullet has more stopping power than a 9 millimeter bullet. It can penetrate car doors, windows, windshields. Boat hulls. Airplane fuselages. Mailboxes. And other objects. It has good range and good accuracy. This ammunition ensures that officers will face no compromise or limitation in overall performance and reliability when using their weapons.